Hello, welcome to another weekly update. It's been a busy week here in the UK and we've had Future Decoded this week. Um, big Microsoft conference happened over two days in London. Um, Satya came and spoke, which was, uh, which was cool. Um, so yeah, kind of that's been happening and also a bunch of other kind of stuff happening for me. But back in, uh, back at home today, as you can see, even managed to get out into the countryside yesterday, but more about that in a minute. Um, so let's talk about what's been happening this week. So, so first of all, um, Microsoft, like a blog post I did, Microsoft have released um, a bunch of infographics around Teams usage. Now, this might not be particularly relevant if you're kind of heavy dev dev teams, um, but if you're looking into Teams and you're excited about kind of you know the dev prospects, then if your organization isn't using Teams, then you need to change that um, in order to get everybody onto Teams so that they can kind of reap the benefits of the stuff that you can do with the dev platform. So it's kind of interesting to keep an eye on what's going on with the user adoption stuff as well. Um, and these are a number of different PDFs. Uh, they're kind of one pages. They're aimed at different verticals, but also different job titles. So for instance, verticals there's things like construction and retail and all those sort of things, but there's also different job titles. Um, like human resources, sales, service engineer, um, you know, all those sort of things. So, and each one, it goes through like a day in the life. So a, a timeline and then throughout the point of those that day, how that user might use Teams to get their stuff done. And it's cool because it brings in a lot of different Teams constructs. So it brings in things like tabs and um, some bots and, um, like the activity feed and all that sort of stuff as well. So it's quite a nice way of just like seeding those features into users' minds. So you can download that from the Tech Community site. I've got a link to it uh, in the blog post. They are still in preview. Um, so what that means is more might be added over time and they might just sort of get tidied up a bit. Um, they might improve. Um, I think what's more likely actually is that we'll see more of them added over time for different, um, different verticals as well. So that's cool. Um, also happening this week, so I want to call out a blog post by my colleague Tom Arbuthnot who blogged about um, Microsoft retiring the Windows 10, no, the Microsoft Teams Windows 10 S app, um, effective the end of this month. Um, now by itself that is maybe interesting if you're using that app. Um, so it was a specific app written for Windows 10 S. The interesting thing about that is that it was kind of written as a hybrid web app, like a PWA, maybe um, HWA, certainly version of the Teams client. And at the time, we all thought that was the direction Teams was going in. You know, PWAs were like a big thing. We saw, you know, a lot of PWA activity happening across Microsoft. So that was kind of interesting and um, interesting. So it's weird, I guess you could say, to see that this app is being depreciated and is going away and is being removed, in fact. What's interesting, what Tom points out, actually, is something that another colleague of mine, um, Keith Kabza, who's a solution architect at, um, he's not one of ours, sorry, he's at Microsoft. Um, uh, uh, Keith Kabza is a solution architect at Microsoft. And uh, he pointed out that Electron is owned, developed, made by GitHub. What's happened with GitHub recently? Microsoft bought GitHub. So you can kind of see an interesting lineup there that actually now Electron is maybe Microsoft owned and therefore Microsoft approved or at least Microsoft are happier staying on Electron. Maybe their goal now is to try and improve that Electron experience over time rather than flipping to another new thing. So I thought that was interesting. Um, so you should go and read Tom's blog post because he explains it much better than I just did. Um, so yes, go and do that. I'll put the link in the show notes. Also happening, um, Coolpark. Coolpark is coming to Microsoft Teams, which is pretty exciting. Now, if you listened to um, Jason and Steve's Office 365 um, Tech and Coffee podcast, I've probably got the name of that wrong, you can go and search for it, I'm sure. Um, if you listened to that recently, um, then you may have heard this kind of side reference by a couple of Microsoft guys. Um, uh, but this is now official, and it's official because it's in the Microsoft 365 roadmap. It's popped up as a new feature that is currently in development. 
and what it's going to do is let you put calls on hold um, and then retrieve that call um, either from the same phone or another phone which is interesting not sure if it's the same user from a different phone or from literally another phone whether you can kind of say pick it up pick up call you know four five six seven um, you can also transfer the part call to a different department um, or including common area phones and where the call is on hold um, the you can still accept new incoming calls so that's going to solve a lot of problems for for kind of lots of people who have these kind of incoming lines that get answered by you know, like a receptionist um, who then triages the calls and sends them on their way so that's kind of cool the estimated release date for this is q4 this year so that's kind of two months away um, it is just an estimate but it kind of gives you a feel for roughly where things are at um, so it's not like miles and miles away which is really good to see um, so yeah um, that, that'll be good if you're waiting for Cool Park or like you need Cool Park then keep an eye on that um, there's a link in the blog post to the actual item so you can actually just keep an eye on that item and, and see as it goes from in development to rolling out to launched and finally um, I mentioned I got up into the countryside the other day um, so the background to this is um, I've been lucky enough to play with a Surface Pro LTE and a Surface Go over the past couple of weeks um, kindly been loaned to me by Microsoft um, and uh, yeah I've been looking at them and, and I wanted to kind of I didn't want to do like a proper review because I'm not very good at proper reviews because it requires lots of preparation and work and stuff and um, there's plenty of better people doing reviews of these products however I wanted to kind of give my thoughts on it and my angle. And there's two, two big takeaways for me. So the Pro is LTE, and that's a really big deal. Um, it's a way bigger deal than I thought it was going to be um, in terms of uh, kind of making you feel like you can work anywhere. And the reason I went up into the countryside was because I wanted to go somewhere and do some work that is you know out in the countryside, out in the sunshine, uh, before the winter really sets in, and uh, which is nice and lovely, but there's no Wi-Fi in the countryside, but there is plenty of LTE. So did some work on the Pro there, it was really good. The other machine, the Surface Go, um, so I took that to Future Decoded and I walked around with it at Future Decoded and it is my new favorite out and about traveling conference machine, hands down. It is so light, it is so small, but it packs a powerful punch. Like it is iPad size and weight, but with a real PC functionality. So if any of that sounds interesting, um, there's a video uh, I did about it that I've done a blog post about, links are in the show notes. Um, it's not really a review, it's just me waffling. It's 10 minutes of me waffling um, about both devices. So if that's interesting, then um, for sure, go and watch that. All right, I think that's everything for this week. I feel like I've missed something, but um, never mind. Uh, if I have, I'll catch up with it next week, um, I'm sure. All right, have a great weekend, and I'll speak to you again next time.